I never thought that I would be a chicken doctor. <laughs> I don't know what you are imagining a chicken doctor does every day. And to be honest, I didn't know either when I started off in veterinary school more than two decades ago. I was born and went to veterinary school on a small island in the Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago. I went to vet school not only because I enjoy working with animals, but also because I am fascinated with how things work. Things in the natural world, like animals and plants. I'm fascinated to see how things function. I spent a lot of my childhood outside, watching and collecting, watching dung beetles roll their little balls of poop, watching my tarantula eat a cricket, collecting frothy eggs and watching them turn into cute little frogs or huge warty toads. My parents can tell some stories. While I was in vet school, I was exposed to several aspects of veterinary medicine, some that may be more familiar to you. The, vet, the vets that take care of your pets, dogs, cats, rabbits, and horses. But I was drawn to food animals. After vet school, I moved to Georgia, and specifically the University of Georgia, to continue my poultry studies. You may or may not be aware that Georgia is a powerhouse of poultry production. Georgia tops the ranks of poultry production states in the nation. In the state of Georgia, more than 88,000 people are employed by the poultry industry. And the annual economic impact to the state is $28 billion. 75% of Georgia counties are involved in poultry and egg production. And UGA is the premier institution to study poultry. I truly intended to complete my poultry specialization program, which was an 18-month intensive non-thesis master's, and return home to my island, to my family, to my fiancé. But here I am, 20-some years later, because I discovered my passion for applied research. I completed a PhD in medical microbiology and a postdoctoral fellowship. And when my mentor retired, I became a faculty member at the Poultry Diagnostic and Research Center in the College of Veterinary Medicine here at UGA. Lucky for me, my fiancé decided that I was worth it and followed me to Georgia. I know some of you are wondering. And now, today, as an avian veterinarian and a microbiologist, I work alongside thousands of veterinarians, ensuring the health and well-being of millions, even billions of poultry, like chickens, turkeys, ducks, and geese. It is a big task because we are feeding billions of people. Poultry is becoming the world's number one protein source. In 2019, poultry accounted for 43% of the world meat consumption, and it is projected to keep rising. In lower income countries, poultry is more affordable than other meats, and in other countries, poultry is seen as a healthier choice than other meats. Poultry and eggs are an affordable and accessible source of high quality and delicious protein. But a large sector of the public seems to have bad feelings about my industry. Over time, and for a variety of reasons, the poultry industry has gotten a bad rep. And sometimes I am even left wondering how did I end up here? A few years ago, I was returning home from a conference, and I was seated next to a lady on a transatlantic flight who spent our time together scolding me and schooling me 
on the evils of commercial poultry production until I pretended to fall asleep. <laughs> Another time, I was at a cocktail party, and I was approached by a lady, complete stranger, who proceeded to tell me all about her chronic infections in great detail. And she was convinced that they were associated with eating chicken. Not to mention all of her suspicion around poultry being not natural anymore. But these scenarios are not unique to me, nor are they an unusual event. Even more, poultry veterinarians have been accused by some of our fellow veterinarians of supporting extreme animal cruelty. But how did we get here? I believe that one of the primary reasons ties back to a series of myths that are widely believed and paint the poultry industry in a bad light. So let's talk about some of those myths and hopefully work to dispel them so that we can be better informed and help better educate those around us. Myth one, commercial chickens are pumped full of antibodies. This tends to be a controversial topic, but this myth is not true. Consumers are not widely exposed to antibiotics by consuming meat. Legally, if there is a need for antibiotic treatment, there are mandatory withdrawal times to make sure that the antibiotics clear the system before uh, they, are, they end up on your table. Food is also regularly tested to ensure that they are residue free. When necessary, we use and try to use antibiotics in a responsible and judicious way, and there are laws in place that govern the use of antibiotics. And there is a requirement for veterinary oversight and approval. Despite very real concerns about antibiotic usage in food animals, it is important to recognize that they still play an essential role in food animal production. We as veterinarians believe that we should have access to tools that prevent the animals that we are caring for from undergoing unnecessary suffering. And sometimes those tools include antibiotic treatments. As a microbiologist, I have focused a lot of my research on developing effective vaccines to control avian mycoplasma. Avian mycoplasma are bacteria that can cause a variety of diseases in poultry, such as upper respiratory diseases similar to a severe cold. The U.S. poultry industry has been working together collectively and in collaboration with the federal government to reduce avian mycoplasmosis, as well as other high-impact diseases like salmonella and avian influenza for decades. My research suggests that implementing control programs that include the use of effective vaccines, we can reduce the need for antibiotics. By using vaccines instead of antibiotics, we can maintain healthy flocks, reduce pain and suffering, keep farmers in business, and continue feeding the world. So by increasing vaccinations, we are further decreasing the need for antibiotics. I want to debunk this myth again, even though my research is still in progress, and there's also other research in progress to find alternatives to antibiotics, but I want to reassure you, your food does not contain antibiotics. Myth two, commercial chickens are injected with artificial growth hormones. Like the uncontrolled use of antibiotics, hormones are also illegal. Not to mention they are ineffective, highly inefficient, and very expensive. This is not happening anywhere. Are chickens bigger today than they were in the past? Absolutely, they are. No two ways around that. But despite this misconception, no hormones or steroids are ever given to poultry to make them grow faster or bigger. All poultry sold in the U.S has to be hormone-free, it's the law. Any brand of chicken in the grocery store can be labeled 
raised without hormones or something like that. So why are chickens bigger? Several reasons. And one of the primary reasons is selective breeding. Selective breeding is a process by which humans breed specific parents to create offspring with desirable characteristics. Humans have been selectively breeding plants and animals for thousands of years. The desirable characteristics for poultry have primarily been meat and egg production. We have taken the ancestor of the, mo of the modern chicken, the red jungle fowl, and over time, roughly 8,000 years, we have selectively bred them to create the specialized breeds that we have today. Other reasons for chickens being bigger, advances in nutrition, housing, lighting, air quality, and disease control. There are scientists all around the world, thousands of scientists working on things such as lighting. How many hours of light? What light intensity? What quality of light? What wavelengths? And those questions barely scratch the surface of knowledge around lighting of poultry. Similarly, feeding poultry can be just as complex. The quality of the ingredients, the nutrient density, the digestibility, the palatability, and the list goes on and on. Modern poultry production really took off in the 1940s, and the advances that poultry scientists have made since then mean that we have chickens today that can maximize on their genetic potential. There, the advances that we have made and poultry scientists are making every day mean that chickens are bigger and healthier than they ever were before. As a veterinarian, I concentrate on poultry health. We are doing a better job of preventing and controlling disease so that we have healthier flocks that we're able to maintain, and that leads to bigger chickens. Again, no hormones are being used to make chickens grow faster and bigger. Myth three, the poultry industry disregards animal welfare. There's a misconception that we in the food animal industry do not care about our animals. But I love chickens and turkeys. <laughs> and I am not alone. I think they are awesome. Those of you that own poultry or have had anything to do with poultry know what I am talking about. Chickens are smart. Chickens can learn and recall. They are curious. They can communicate. They can recognize faces. And they can experience emotions. And the reason that a lot of us choose to work in this profession is because we really enjoy working with these animals. Animal welfare is an important issue in the poultry industry, and it is not being ignored. However, we do have ongoing issues that need to be solved. There are teams of, of people around the world that are dedicated to making changes with respect to animal welfare in the poultry industry. I have no desire to work in an industry where we torture animals unnecessarily and un unendingly. As veterinarians, we take our stewardship and responsibilities seriously. When we are admitted to the profession, we take an oath, an oath that includes the protection of animal health and welfare and the prevention and relief of animal suffering. We endeavor to keep our oath. And in the world of research, where I am, in the US, institutional animal care and use committees are centrally important to ensuring compliance with animal welfare laws. When I or any of my peers submit, design a research project that involves animals, we need to submit a highly detailed plan to the committee for review and approval. We need to tell them how any, many animals we will use and justify where that number came from, how the animals will be cared for and treated, if there is any unavoidable pain or suffering in the experiment, 
if there are any alternatives, and what we will do if the things go unexpectedly wrong during the research. The committee and the researchers work together as a team to ensure that valuable research is accomplished while maximizing the humane care of our animals. We as researchers and as an industry are held accountable by you. You have the power to drive changes in terms of how animals are treated. If there is a public demand for improved animal welfare, then it is more likely that there will be research funds available for those projects. And scientists can continue to explore ways to tackle some of the ongoing issues. So, the poultry industry does not disregard animal welfare, although there is plenty of room for ongoing research to continue to improve upon their care. I want you to feel good about your food. I want you to be mindful about what you are putting in your body and what you are feeding to your loved ones. I want you to care about where your food comes from and how it is produced. I want you to care about animal welfare. I want you to care about the impact on the environment of commercial meat production. I don't think that it's right that a large sector of our population may feel uncomfortable or even a little guilty about poultry consumption because they believe some of these myths. Antibiotics are not widely used in poultry. Animal welfare is not being disregarded, and hormones are never used in poultry production. I urge you to consider all of the information coming at you carefully and critically. Think about how likely it is to be completely true. And we all know that there are different levels of truth. Leaving out part of the story can change the picture completely. Consider the source of the information and any agenda that may go along with that. Find credible data and informed individuals, like chicken doctors, and be open to the truth. I don't want you to think, I'm not trying to say that the poultry industry is all butterflies and rainbows. This is still a business, a business that we depend on to pay our mortgages and send our kids to college. You, as our consumers, have the power to drive the urgency and direction of our research. And our commitment to you, in return, is that we will do our very best to ensure safe, nutritious, healthy, affordable, and accessible high-quality food to you. <laughs>